interviewing Halo from season four of Ink Master. Let's do this. Let's go live with Halo. Let's steal people. What is up, everybody, for coming in? Hey, Halo. What's up, man? How are you? Good. How about yourself? Dude, I'm awesome, man. Just got off work, so I'm fucking golden, man. Yeah, I feel you. I'm a realtor, so I'm I'm not I'm always at work when I'm at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that when you're an artist, man. You're kind of you're kind of always always working. Yeah, I I grew up doing graffiti, so drawing, painting. I mean, I haven't done, done it in a while, but I mean, definitely. Even when I was younger, I was always doing something. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I work with a guy who um started out tattooing actually doing graffiti oh nice yeah yeah I, I guess it's like how he got his like start into art was doing graffiti in, like in new york on subways and stuff like that it's a, it's, it's even a lot of precision like to do it with the can and the just like the different needles with the different caps i mean it definitely yeah. helps. All right, so, so it seems start, like it i want to start with just for everybody who doesn't know halo was in the top four of ink master season four which, personally, I think they should have done a top four in the finals. I think that was the only year they should have done that because it was just too tight with all four of you guys. It, for them not to do oh, yeah. that one year, I mean, rest in pieces to Scott Marshall for winning, but uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely should have been a top four. Yeah, it was. it's strange because um, that, was the, that was the only season, to my knowledge, where um, the only people who... Uh, the only people who won any of the the challenges or anything were the only people that ended up in top. Like, I thought that was so weird because no one else on our season won a challenge at all. It was just us four just at each other's throats the whole time. <laughs> Honestly, I was, on, I was on Wikipedia, and I saw that you and Scott literally won the same amount of challenges. Like, it showed that, yeah. that you guys won four and four. So, I mean, your report card speaks for itself. And, yeah, that was at least one of the years they should have they should have changed a little bit of the rules to get you guys all in there but yeah here says so yeah. first question off just for people to know you what is your favorite style of tattooing that you enjoy doing um man I'd, pr I'd probably have to say i'd probably have to say portraits are one of my favorite things to do but i've i think recently especially after the show i've just been enjoying like pretty much just whatever comes out of my head because i've been freehanding stuff for probably like six or seven years now and i don't know i i guess it sounds kind of crappy but like what i what i always tell people is if you just let me draw it i'm gonna have fun doing it because I'll, I'll never i'll never draw anything that i'm like ah, i don't feel like doing this no I mean, um i mean it's you're like like i looked at a lot of your paintings because i mean i've been following your work like the pokemon one where you did like the collaboration <laughs> Like yeah, me and Adam. Like Mario, like like a little bit of the Mario theme in there. Like you're a certain artist who I'd be like, you know what, just go balls to the walls because I would just from going through in your work, I would trust from your creativity. Oh, thank you so much, man. Yeah, that was a collaboration between uh, one of my buddies, Adam Aguas. He's he's. I sometimes I feel like I'm much better at like I can see the drawing finished before it's done, and he's very good at uh at coming up with the concept and the idea and then i feel like i'm good at going oh my god i know how to color that in so uh, yep. we had a lot of we're, we're, we're doing a pikachu soon actually we're i just um was with him in chicago i think yesterday or day before yesterday and he's working on a pikachu to kind of finish off the set that's my favorite one is the pokemon ones has anybody ever got them or requested to get a tattoo um from Adam, I think he ended up doing one of them, but it's funny because I've seen other people tattoo them, like other people tattoo them and get them tattooed. Oh, like your rendition, um, somebody else tattooed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, our prints that we sell, like that specific artwork, we've seen other people tattoo it. Which I know some people are kind of butthurt about. Um, I'm not too worried about it. You know, like I think in the long run, you know it's your artwork. Um, I mean, shit, dude, over the course of my career, I've copied so many people's art, you know, like, I just have. I mean, as long as the artist doesn't say that, that it's their own artwork, I mean, I think, I think it's a compliment. Because, I mean, if, like, for example, I live in South Florida. I mean, I'd want mm -hmm. your work done by you, but as someone who's not really into the scene, like, loves your work, but doesn't want to go to where you are, it's kind of like, ah, oh, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah, um, where in South Florida are you? Fort Lauderdale. I'm, um, 
I go back and forth to Tampa almost every single week, every week and a half almost. Yeah, Tampa's like four hours, I think, from South. Oh, okay, gotcha. Florida's so damn big. <laughs> yeah, you got like my, like Miami, West Palm, and you start going north to like Orlando and everything. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, my girlfriend lives out in uh, Florida. Yeah, are you doing any conventions down in South Florida this year? Um, I think I'm doing the Tampa convention. I don't know about South Florida, but I know I'm doing the Tampa convention this year. Um, and I think that's it. I haven't done a Florida convention in a while. I used to do like the Miami show. Um, but I, from what I've noticed is Florida, maybe this is just my experience, but Florida people want to find Florida artists. Um, you know, yeah. so I, I, a lot of times when I was there, people would be like, Hey, where are you from? And I'd be like, Oh, I'm from Maryland. And they'd be like, oh, okay, never mind." I'm like, why does it matter? I'm here now, like right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you go to these conventions, like a lot of the people that present their artwork, it's like the same shop, the same artist, and it comes like a, rend like a, a rendition. Like you already know, like this, there's a one shop in Miami that has very well-rounded artists, but like they're always like telling their clients to come to the conventions. And so it's just like, it becomes like the same, same thing where there's nothing unique about it. Like I see a lot of oh, the yeah. two conventions are better, like up north or at least out of like this whole South Florida scene. Which sucks because it's like, it's this is like a number one like tourist area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what it seems like. I did we did one in Fort Myers and um, there's an Ink Life tour in Fort Myers, and it was dead, man. There was no one there because I and then we learned it like Fort Myers is like a retirement town. Yeah, Fort I Myers. Guess. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know anybody's like, yo, I'm gonna go party in Fort Myers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, to, so just is, just the Tampa show. So where did the nickname Halo come from? Uh, from my grandfather, oh, wow. uh, when I was really, really young, yeah. Um, and that's actually my real name. Um, Your name is Halo? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> to grow up with? Yeah, yeah. It's I, I've been called that since I was really young. Um, and it's been, uh, it's just kind of something that's stuck. Um, kind of a long story about how it started or whatever but it's just something like a nickname that i had when i was a kid and then it stuck and then um it, we just legally changed it oh dang yeah my name yeah my name is sean so growing up there was like every class i had there was like three sean's and <laughs> i'm watching that's that was my original name when i was well my original name is sean patrick oh see <laughs> yeah look at that yeah, sean's I, and sean's i always find like we're watching a netflix show me and my wife today, and the, the child actor in the movie's name, Sean, I'm like, it's just like, ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So funny enough that Pink Master's doing their own, like, live thing right now, so rolling into that, how was your experience on the season four? Because I believe now it's season nine is this season. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it's it's definitely gone some ways from when you were, I mean, it's been a few, yeah, probably like three years or? Yeah, something like that. Um, it was, it was, <laughs> that's one thing, it's so hard to explain it unless you're there, you know, because I, I really used to think that, I guess, like, watching the show, I was like, man, you know, it's, it looks so simple, what is everyone's problem? <laughs> and then you get there, and it's not, man, like, it's, uh, that's one of the hardest things I've ever done, ever, and it's easy to sit on the sideline like I did and say, I don't get what the problem is. How could you spill ink all over your face? Or, you know, how could you make that mistake? You have six hours to do the tattoo. What is your problem? And it's just so much pressure. I and mean, I'm not used to having a bunch of cameras on me. Um, yeah, I'll speak I'm not about it. And I didn't know how crazy the conditions they put you guys in. Like on the show, when people say it, it's like, oh, it's the show. But, like, to really hear, like, this is legit, like, not scripted. It really is this no. intense. And, like, when you have other artists come on, they're like, oh, you really don't know how serious this is to the new artists that come on. And I'm thinking, oh, cool, this is probably just a way to, you know, spook them. But from hearing from, like, what you just said and what other artists I'm speaking about, Ink Master, it's like, it's like a, in a sense, like a boot camp. Like, you're in an army when you're there. Yeah, it's, um... It's it's funny. Somebody, my buddy um, Ashley, just said, "How could you miss a point on the Statue oh. of Liberty?" <laughs> it's um, when man, you're, under all that, you're, pressure, I mean, it's I can only imagine. It's easy to mess up, man. Like it really is because like people don't think like first off, there's no music, so I'm not used to tattooing in dead silence at all. It's awkward and weird, 
And the second thing is, um, is you're not, dude, you have cameras this close to your face all the time. In while each room, there are usually, what's that? Like while you're tattooing, a camera's like this, like when you're tattooing. Oh, yeah. Dude, I've turned around from, I've been like tattooing and turned around and bumped into a camera. Like they're, they're so close to you. And it's weird because you're not allowed to talk to them and they're not allowed to talk to you. You're not allowed to look at the camera because um, it's ingenuine to look at the camera, you know, like. <laughs> Not to be like, Yo, so someone's right here. What's that? Oh, please, like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you you know, working in those conditions are strange because you always feel watched. You know, like you always feel like, um, I don't know. It's like Big Brother. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's it's strange, man. Like, and you're you're always watching what you say. Like, it's funny because when I before I went on the show, I was like, you know, I'm pretty much the same all the time. I'm a really consistent dude. And I felt like when I get on the show and I, I'm just going to be myself, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to let my work speak for itself. But when you have a camera on you, it's hard to, you stutter a lot. Like it's hard to speak correctly. You're always worrying about how you're saying things and what you're going to say. Um, it's, it's very, it's very nerve wracking, man. And it's, it's not what people think it is. It's not what I thought it was, for sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good artists, they like fumbled on there, and like someone viewing it, you're like, damn, how did like how did you like someone said, oh, how did you just mess up? Like sitting behind the screen, you really don't know all the stuff. Like I think I think they said what it's like a thousand, I think like a thousand hours or something for you to get like an, an hour of footage, or there's some like crazy thing behind that. Yeah, I think for each episode, it's like fifty hours, but it's in a three day period. Oh, so, so minimum. Yeah, yeah. So you're like at 15, like around about 15 hours a day, man. Like we wake up at six in the morning and we don't stop filming until nine o'clock or so at night. And that's all day long. My as soon as you wake up, you got a camera in your face. You're they're putting makeup on you. They're letting you know what you're going to be wearing for the day. And that's it. It's it's over. Let me get back. So. Well, I'm listening to you. I'm in my living room. <laughs> I messed up and said a thousand hours and my wife's cracking up over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, all together, it probably could have been because of the, the setup time and stuff like that. I mean, the hours that you spend getting ready or going from place to place sometimes, I mean, is like, like when we were in Coney Island, that was an all day event, man, just for us to go to Coney Island. You know, we had to get two buses of people together. They had to get um, a drone to like fly up and take camera shots of us. We had to walk and then we had to go back, walk again, go back, walk again. So they get all these different angles and these different shots to tell their story. Um, it's it's a lot more than it seems. It really is. It's cool though. It's you really ever, cool. You ever like make you guys repeat stuff? Like, all right, you know, this has to look better again. Like go back and redo that same thing or is it like a one shot like type of uh, take? Like, you know, like when they have like the, the judges, like they'll walk around the corner or like they'll walk up to you guys and like, you guys will walk up to them. Like, is that all like one shot or do they make you like? No, no. Mo most of the things are one shot except for where you're standing or where you're walking. Like sometimes walking in might be two shots, you know, like walk in. Okay, everybody walk out. Okay, everybody walk in, you know, like things like that or um walked in the aisle but everything that's said is is one shot like everything i can say that everything that was said on that show is super candid um it just depends like, on how it's said so even like with the critiques like i heard like you know we see like a quick 20 second critique but i heard they actually it's really go in depth. yeah like her like, it's like really in depth like when they do your critiques it's like 10 minutes per like person Oh, right. dude, it's longer than that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's probably up to like 30 or 40 minutes a person for each critique. Oh, I swear. For I swear. Point. Yeah. Like, dude, the, so the way it works is your flash challenge takes an entire day. And then the elimination tattoo takes an entire day. And then the, the judges judging you takes an entire day. Like, it's all day long. You're getting judged standing there. I remember, like, we were all laughing about our feet hurting, like, because we're just standing like, yeah, you know, the whole time. <laughs> it's 50, like all, like forty, like so. Basically, you're a few hours during the elimination, and then we see like ten minutes. It's just, it's crit. Like, sadly, yeah. I'm doing these interviews because a lot of people now get to know really behind the scenes of it's not as simple and as easy. And and I know probably I don't know if you, but I know probably a lot of people who are trying to now get onto the show for not even for the right reasons, just for like to get onto the show, just to like get I guess 
Insta fame or whatever story yeah. it is. Yeah, I didn't even want to go on the show at all. Like when they first asked me to go on, I didn't even want to go on. Like I actually said no to season three. Kyle Dunbar is the reason I went on season four. Oh, you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we've known each other for like six, seven years before Ink Master. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, we, we usually do like the Detroit show in our booth together. Um, he's the one who talked me into it. Sarah Miller tried talking me into it uh, at one point. She, her and I have been best friends for a while. And, um, you know, I was like, no, I really don't want to go on the show. And mainly because I didn't, I didn't want people to, I didn't want people getting tattooed by me because they saw me on TV. You know, like they want you want your was, art to speak for yourself, not like, oh, he's a yeah. master, so just tattoo me. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't want that, and, and you know, like especially I've been doing conventions for so long that I really feel like I worked hard to like, uh, like I don't mean like worked hard because it feels like I'm I'm not like a suck up, but I did work hard to try to gain the respect of my peers by oh, doing things course. the way that they're supposed to be done. You know, yeah, because some artists who come on the show, you know, they're they're like really no name artists. I mean, now they're bad, but they're no name. And then they get yeah. on the show, and then it's like, boom. Like, for whatever reason, they'll get big. And then it's just like, damn. Like, I mean, I understand, like, all the work you put in to really do that. And then the show skyrockets. It's good and bad for people's careers. Like, Kyle oh, yeah. was a fan of him. And I think, I mean, there had to be more, too, like, when he blew up with him and, like, Chris. Like, I feel like there had to be yeah. more than just, like, because they made, they really put Dunbar to be, like, the villain. But it, I'm like, Nobody blows up like no. that for No, he, he wasn't the villain. He when, those critiques take a long time and there were things in the critiques that I feel like were edited out. I mean they they definitely you did you definitely don't see them. Yeah. But they're he would kind of like defend himself and then I feel like the judges came down on him really hard. And then he would defend himself again. And then, like, there were things that were said, like, you're just a pigeonhole shit artist. You know what I mean? And it's like, whoa, dude, like, talk about the tattoo on the screen. Don't talk about me. And, you know, eventually he started getting – but a lot of stuff happened, dude. Like, he had one of those Wacom tablets, like the $2,000 Wacom tablets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got smashed, like, the first day he was there. Like, whoever the producer people were that were handling it, like, somehow got broken. I don't know whether it was – broken or they broke it but i know he was mad about it so he he just started off on a bad foot and i feel bad for him because he's honestly one of the nicest people you'll ever meet no, he's like a genuine nice person like you can he see is. Like, he was trying to hold back you know emotions and whatnot but then i mean everybody has their own tipping point you know you can't just someone just can't keep like doing this to the point where even on like a, a national tv show or not Oh yeah, oh yeah, and you know he was he was on the show beforehand. So, a lot of the people who go on the second time around all say like their second time around was way worse than their first time because it was they you go in having an expectation and then the whole season's different and you're like I, I don't recognize this place you know like this isn't the same as my last season so I That's don't know I feel like it's I harder come back for a second time like I'm always like eh. Like, I know, like, when I was, like, Christian, um, he came back for the second time. The people that come back for the second time, got, I mean, that really did good, got to the finals, like, clean and Christian yeah. and, and Matt. But I was, like, I would I would let my one, because I'll let my one season, if it was, like, me as an artist, I would just stick to that season and then just, like, let it ride. Unless it yeah. offered me some crazy deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't wanted to go back on, really. I mean, like, Has I always... To do, like, any, like, I... oh, there's been, like, Ink Redemption, and then have like the the holiday specials. I mean, have they like reached out to you like, hey, would you like to come yeah. out? Yeah, they wanted me to be on season seven with Maddie and Sausage, um, but you know, I haven't really wanted to be on. I still haven't even watched my season. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I can, I can understand that. It's kind of like a weird thing, but like, you never even like watch the episodes or like how like artists will have like the like, oh, come to the bar and watch it live with us. Yeah, we did that. We did, like, the the viewing parties, but you're usually, like, you're usually talking to people so much, and it's usually, like, in bars, especially it's loud, you know? Um, so I didn't really get to watch a lot of it. I, I had, like, snid, like, snid bits of it, but uh, I haven't, like, sat down and watched it yet at all. I wish, I mean, I wish I would have, but um, 
I was real sick, like going on the um, going on to it. Like I had just beat cancer, so I was like real like. Oh man, well, like yeah, skinny I, I and the like, eyes were sunken yeah, in. Like, that's that's you already. I mean, that's a win on its own. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what gave me the courage to go on the show in the first place was you know b battling cancer and beating it. But every time I see myself on the show, like just to give you and everyone a heads up, I've never been that small, dude. Like. I've always been a more, like, bigger, mu like, more muscular, more, like, stout, larger. Um, and going on that show, I think I was, like, 80 pounds smaller than I am now. 80. It, it was it was insane. Like, I, I watch myself on the show, and I'm like, I, all I can – it just reminds me of being sick, you know? I mean, I was like, like, you never even – like, I don't – I mean, at least I don't remember. You never even mentioned that, which a lot of people, they'll put, like, their personal life in the show. But, like, you just – you know, you did your thing, and – you didn't really give any excuses, you know, because it doesn't matter what's going on behind the scenes. You know, you're right there in the moments. So I respect that because I had no, I mean, I don't think anybody besides people on the show knew that or your friends. Yeah, they, um, they, they made me talk about it on the initial part of the, like, meet your, was it the meet your master thing that they do? Like the little okay. interviews and they really, really wanted me to talk about, like, um, my battle with cancer and stuff like that. But it wasn't like a... I never brought it up on the show because I was scared that they would edit it to be like, I was like, like, like that was my story and it wasn't, you know, like that's a, a chapter in my life, but it's not your story. Yeah. yeah, dude. No, I'm, I'm an artist before anything else. Um, regardless of the things that happen outside of my life. I mean, I was there to be an artist and compete. So tell us that that goes in my next thing. Like before you start, well, two things how long like when you started tattooing and before you started tattooing did you were you a painter and like an artist first or did once you ended up doing it kind of like combined to like really start because a lot of people they'll they'll tattoo and then they'll start drawing and they'll like see they have a talent or before that they'll start drawing like how did your tattooing like come into play well i never drew ever before i started tattooing like really? ever never yeah, yeah like, i guess I got into it so stupidly and so ignorantly, and it's so I was a musician um, before I started uh, before I started tattooing. Um, there was this place called Thunderdome. My band used to play at, among other places, all over Maryland, um, and uh, just just being around that type of scene, um, you know, like other people with tattoos. I had never seen a good tattoo ever, man. Like I, I there, we didn't have shows like Ink Master, um, tattoo magazines were kind of far and few between. The only tattoos I'd ever seen are the ones of my friends. And frankly, they were just, just shitty. Even the ones from shops, man, were just shitty. And so I never, was just a like, how many years ago? Like that? seven years ago? Um, since I started tattooing? Like since, so like from what you were saying, like how you got into it, like just so like we, the backstory. Uh, so this was when I was 21. So, and I'm 34 now. So this is like 13, 14 years ago. Oh, so it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. This was a long time ago. And tattooing was different back then, man. Like, there weren't a lot as far as the shops go. Um, overall, you walked into a shop, you saw a flash on the wall, and you picked something off the wall. The artist would trace it, and then they would do it on you. So I had never seen uh, great artwork. Um, so I was playing music, and then when our band ended up going apart, we used to hang out at this tattoo shop uh, called Positive Image, which was across the street from one of the venues we used to play at. And we used to go in there and hang out after we'd set up uh, until we'd play our set. And uh, uh, after, you know, the band fell apart, I just randomly asked the guy, I was like, I mean, how hard can it fucking be? It's tattooing. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I was so ignorant, man. Like, I was like, ah, big deal. You, you pull something off the wall, you trace it, you color it in. I could learn how to do that. I've been tattooed before. And, yeah, yeah, somebody said good old positive image. Rest in peace, Eric. Eric's the guy who taught me how to tattoo. Um, nice. Yeah, even still to this day, at my station, I have, like, a kind of a memorial to him, kind of that, thanking him for everything. That's awesome. Um, but I never drew, man. I never did. I never doodled or... I never was interested in art. Um, I felt like if I looked at something, I could figure it out. Like if the if the outline was there, I could follow a straight line, and I but I couldn't. And I could color it in like I saw it, but I couldn't. And I was like, man, this is really difficult. And the difficulty intrigued me. And then so I started seeking out knowledge, you know, seeking out um, 
like more information. And the more information I sought out, the the hungrier I got. And I think that's what started, you know, because a lot of people are like, you know, doing art as a gift. Yeah. And that's, such, it's such BS, dude. Like, I can't stand, God gave you a gift. And it's a <laughs> gift, it's not, dude. You know, I always tell people, if it was such a gift, I wouldn't have to work so hard at it. Um, I mean, like, it, people who are like, people like LeBron, like LeBron didn't just become LeBron. You know, he practiced no. every freaking day, eat, slept, breathed, basketball. So, I mean, it's the same as that thing. I mean, some people are gifted where they can, you know, draw, but that's not in every scenario where someone just has a natural talent. You know, even then, it's very, very rare that someone, because you don't come out of the womb drawing. You know, like, you're not a baby and you're not <laughs> drawing, but... Yeah, like Mozart um, out of the womb. Yeah, exactly. But but the thing is, like, um, I think it's the passion, you know? Like, I don't think anyone has an innate ability to draw. I think that people have an innate passion that they're born with. Like, it doesn't matter how hard you want me to play the clarinet. I don't like the sound of the clarinet. So even if I practiced and practiced and practiced, I, I don't like the sound of it. So I'm not going to, you know, or like running. Like, if someone doesn't like running, they're not going to run as well, even if they put in the same amount of work as somebody who is really, really passionate about running. You know? No, I, no, I agree on that. I mean, for that's, I mean, what I was thinking, I thought you were going to tell me straight that you drew before, not that you drew after, because how did, because your style, how did you adapt to it? Because if you're starting back then was a lot more traditional was like the flash additional stuff because your style is very unique and it's i would say it's like if i was on acid and i looked at it that's how I would <laughs> it. <laughs> like if i'm watching pokemon and i'm on like some type of psychedelic and then i i see like the the people who don't know go to his page he has like three pokemon together and just the way you did i mean how did you create your style then because when you started like you said it was very flash on the wall simple stuff sailor or jerry and you have like such a different style. I, it's, I wouldn't even say it's new school because it's not new school. It's just like a you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I I think that's that's really what it is. Is kind of your like what inspired you or like where you draw your uh, like inspiration from? Either is that from where from where you got your art? Because everywhere, man. Honest to God, it's everywhere. I think that like we we all want to think that we're us, right? Like, like you want to think you are you, but you're not you, you're your upbringing, you're your friends, you're your interests, you know, like you're, you're, you're an accumulation of a lot of things. And in art, it's, it's no different than growing or it's kind of like a baby, honestly, that you nurture into itself. And so I, I wish I could say I had my style, but I've pulled things from my idols. I've pulled things from, um, I, I, I pull things from Magic the Gathering. I pull things from video games. I, was gonna, I see like a lot of, I see a lot of video game inspiration. Like I saw, <laughs> yeah. I put in those, some notes down. Like I saw like a lot of like Final Fantasy stuff. Even in the way like, oh, yeah. like when you do your, uh, not your portraits. I mean, sometimes in the portraits, because cartoons and video games are all about like bright colors and saturation and, and making it pop. And a lot of your portraits like do the same thing. Like, it's not, like, just a, like, I don't say a monotone, but it's not just, like, that basic, like, I was, like, the Willy Wonka and the um, Wonder Woman, like, you really make those colors contrast with the skin, which video games really do that, so, like, all, so it's, like, all this crazy, nice um, mix going on. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's, it's about, I don't know, I, I really wish I could give it to something, you know, like I really wish I could say like it's this one thing, but dude, I pick up and I, I evolve so much too, man. I pick up so many things um, from so many different people. Uh, oh, somebody said Halo and Dave Waugh represent. I just got tattooed by him not that long ago. What'd you get? Um, it was a otter like on my leg. He did. Dave Waugh's an artist in Maryland. He's a a really, really traditional artist, but he's fantastic. I've, I've looked up to that guy's work since he started, and he's amazing. Um, but, dude, I, I pick up, I mean, I'm even starting to pick up now, like, things, there's a guy, Sean Duffy, who just started tattooing me last year, and when I got tattooed by him, he completely changed the way I tattoo, period. Like, he... That what like just getting tattooed by him, I was like, shoot, I'm doing everything wrong. I need to pick up some of these things. Like, you you evolve so much from the people you're around. All the guys I work with, um, 
they constantly change the way I tattoo. So I, I, I couldn't give credit to anything. And I think it's just being diligent, um, constantly looking at other people's artwork and being inspired, man. That's a big part of being an artist, I think, is 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 practicing, but also constantly being inspired, man. Putting yourself in situations to kind of gawk at other people and, and be a fan, you know? Like, if you walked into my shop, it's covered in original artwork, dude. I spend so, an embarrassing amount of money on art, like <laughs> original, genuine original art, because um, I have an art gallery in my studio. Nice. Um, and it's because I'm a fan. I, I, you know, like, I'm blown away that people like my artwork because I spend so much time liking other people's artwork that I just, I forget I'm an entity completely, you know, like, um, I, I just do, I forget totally. Yeah. I mean, you're, you look at so many other people, which I mean, a lot, like I'm reading the comments, like you're so humble about yourself that you don't put yourself like on a pedestal. So you don't really even look at it. No. Like you just, you're just doing you. And then when you get people saying compliments, you're, it's just being, you know, appreciative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely appreciate when people are like, oh, my God, I love your artwork. But part of me wants to be like, how when <laughs> this person exists or that person exists, like when Boris Vallejo and Julie Bell exist or you know, all the people I look up to. It's so difficult for me to look at my artwork and be like kind of, I don't know, like happy. But, like I'm embarrassed every time I put a piece of artwork up. Like I'm always like it's a, you're just I mean, in the sense artwork is like a raw, like you're exposing yourself in your way. So it's kind of like oh, yeah. a little bit of a piece of you. So when people judge it, it's like if they're judging the artwork, it's kind of like it's judging you. So I, I could definitely see where you're coming from on that. Like I was yeah. looking yeah. at some of the old school stuff that I like. I went on Google and I, I looked up like when I used to paint and I saw like pieces that I totally forgot I did. And I was just <laughs> that thing. I'm like, damn, it's still on Google. Like it wasn't bad, but just the fact that you're always going to critique yourself than, than what the other person is going to be. Yeah, yeah, that stuff comes back, and especially tattooing, that stuff come back to haunt, like comes back to haunt you for sure. Like old tattoos that I've done, where people are like, "Yo, man, what's going on?" And then they're like, "Remember you did this on me?" And I'm like, "Ah, shoot, you know, like get that, <laughs> put that away." Um, you know, stuff you did 12, 13 years ago that you're just, oh. And it's it's good that you can look back at stuff like that because it, I think it's art is kind of like a stepping ladder to see how you've grown, you know. So, like, you can look at that stuff and see it growing. What's on your arm there, dude? That looks great. What oh, is that? My, my, uh, you had to use my hand as my selfie stick. I got this done, uh, last year. Oh, nice, man. That's awesome. That's all. Zeus, right? Poseidon. Poseidon. There we go. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, the shells in his hair. That's, who did that? This was done by an artist named Bolo from Incaholics in Miami. Is that Russ Abbott up here too? No, actually, it looks like it. But uh, one of my friends, uh, Carlos, he works at a, I mean, in my area, a shop called Three Layers Deep in Cold Springs. And from just, I had a really bad, I had some street stuff on my chest when I first, I mean, I'm 26. I started getting tattooed when I was 16. So some, no, some stuff <laughs> I didn't do the smartest. And he did a giant cover up and just like made like an ugly duckling so freaking beautiful. So shout out to Carlos. I mean, yeah, it's, that's awesome. Yeah, he does a lot of cover-up work. I mean, it's like a neo-traditional. Um, I have an hourglass with wings, and yeah, <laughs> that's but, awesome, man. It looks really good. I didn't. I never even thought about it, but it does look. And even when we were doing like picking the design, like he even brought him out, like to show because Russ Abbott his color wheel that he has. Yeah, like he was even showing me that. So I mean, I definitely. Now you mentioned there was some inspiration in there for uh, for my chess piece. Yeah, Russ is the man, dude. He's amazing. Amazing. I want to go through some of the comments because we're like, I'm totally avoiding everybody. So like, <laughs> just because you were talking, you definitely didn't want to interrupt. I'm trying to scroll up to see. It's all good. Somebody, uh, buzz, I'm sorry if I butcher your name. Basa Baraj. He's like, hi. Uh, he's a fan from. He's a fan from India. He's like, oh, nice man. What's up? He wants to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do any of that, dude. No <laughs> token for me. That's for A Rod. Everybody's saying that you're dope. Someone said they want you to uh, paint your pickup truck Zelda theme. <laughs> yeah, I don't even honestly paint cars anymore like that. It's so much work. What I started doing recently is I started, um, 
I started doing the designs for the wraps. My, my little sister's car, I just did that. Uh, I basically paint it, and then I have a wrap company that I work with, and then they wrap the car for you with my artwork on it. So it's kind of like me painting it. I mean, it's a lot more, yeah. <laughs> Not into because painting a car must... I don't know what season it was where they painted, like, the Mustang. I don't know if that was your Yeah. Season. No, it wasn't my season. It was uh, two, I think. Was that two or three, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> and, like, and then, like, the winner won the Mustang. Winner, but used to, did you, like, use the airbrush on the um, – or do you used to actually paint on the, the cars? Um, no, I would paint, like – and, well, I, it was airbrush and paint. A lot of it is paintbrush, but um, I use an airbrush to get smooth edges or transitions, but uh, majority of the work I do on cars is mostly paintbrush. I just – I feel better with a paintbrush in my hand. Yeah, the airbrushing is fun, but fun it's mechanical. Brush. It's you don't have a lot of accuracy with an airbrush. And I mean, it's that's like that's an art form that's like dying. That's like when you go to Orlando and you see, like that people draw it on your shirt. <laughs> so some of the other yeah. questions on here that people have for you. Uh, one girl has been commenting a lot. Purple Heart nine one one. She wants to know, she wants to know who is your idols or basically they're not the idolized, but just anybody in the sense you look up to. To better uh, rephrase that, Whew. I guess in the art world, man, it would. Oh uh, man, it's that's a tough one. Um, in tattooing, I mean, I would probably have to say people like Russ Abbott, um, you know, Jesse Smith, uh, Guy Atchison, um, Jeff Koga. I mean, these are all people I got to work with recently, which is still blowing my mind. Um, Did you just like go to actually got the... that convention? That? Was, was it this? The one where they had where Black Anchor did their academy thing. Oh, Golden State. Yeah. No, no, I didn't go to that. I haven't done a lot of conventions this last year. We've been doing a huge build out on my shop, so. Um, oh, you opened. I just I was gonna bring that up too. You just opened up your shop, right? Or, or just re. No, I we just made with, it way too big. <laughs> just we just made it way too big. What's that? No, because I because I thought I saw something with you. You said, or I I probably read wrong with your black with the Black Lotus. That, uh, yeah, that's that's been around for a couple years now, but um, within a year and a half, we took it from 2,800 square feet to 8,150 square feet. What? You, it, you have, like, the whole it's a nightmare. 8,000? Yeah. It's huge, dude. The shop is enormous. Um, we put a second floor on part of it. Um, it's silly. It's it's honestly silly big. If you go to um, www.blacklotustattoos.com, um, you can see all the really cool artists that I get to work with. All those guys are incredible, it, literally incredible. But um, you get to see the shop because we just took pictures, like professional photos of the shop, and did like a little like video tour of it. It's it's a pretty shop, man. I now I'm gonna. I've never seen a two story, eight thousand square feet tattoo shop. <laughs> it's silly. It's big. No, it's um, what you love. Yeah. So like, this year has been. I've just been home, man. I've been home and I've been working on the shop, trying to do everything um, that I can. And in May, we're hosting a huge video game art show. Um, so the I'm, I'm inviting a bunch of my buddies out from Ink Master and other tattooers, but we're doing a whole uh, art show based and themed on video games. Damn. So, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. It's open to the public. Um, it's the day after the Baltimore convention at my shop. Like, we have drinks, cosplayers. We have live music, um, food. It's going to be fun, man. It'll be a lot of fun. So many great people meeting, so many places I want to visit, and it's like, damn. Like, that sounds – and then I, I, I honestly want to go just see the 8,000 square feet and what you utilize <laughs> within that 8,000 square feet. The, the most impressive part of the shop, though, has got to be the, um, the art in it. I mean, because you can – I've been planning on doing this recently, but you can, um, I want to see it real quick. You can actually see, um, you, you can probably spend an entire day there just looking at artwork. Eventually, I'd like to do something like that, too, like have people come in just for an entire day to see art. Hey, guys, you know? just want to let you know. I, I, I feel like that would be cool because there's so much in there, and I feel like sometimes people will walk around and check out the art, but I don't think unless I explain how I got the art and what it means to me and where, you know, how I met the people that did the art. Like showcases. I feel like a tour would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like have a day where you just come out and, you know, I don't know, like, you know, we make drinks and 
you know, I spend four hours just going through and talking about the art on the wall. Like, you know, like an art tour, like a museum would have or something. No, that's, I want to say, I've never heard of an artist, well, a tattoo artist, dude. That's dope because to me, it's all about the experience. Like, uh, growing up, like I was, I had my own clothing brand and I was very big in a brand. Oh, nice. I was, I was very big in a brand that did, uh, their own. It's like, for example, I don't know if you heard of Johnny Cupcakes. He's a shop from. I feel like I have. It's like, for example, he's a. He has a clothing brand. Like when you go to his place in Boston, I don't know if it's still there. Uh, but like you'd walk in, it looked like a bakery. If you buy a shirt, uh, one time it would come in a rolling pin. So like it's to me, yeah. So it's like all about the experience of what you're doing with the shop. People could come in and just look at the art, and then and then you can get business just from that, or just get oh, yeah. people to. So I think it's such a great way just for the everybody to get to know you, your shop, business personality. Um, you're, I mean, it's, it's a very smart idea. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, man. I want to go to other it's people. Cool. Uh, everybody's saying you're, you're the real ink master. Someone's like, you're the real art master. No, uh -huh. I saw somebody just said, can we tour the shop without getting a tattoo? Um, you 100% can. And I hope people do like, um, I don't, you don't have to come get a tattoo just to, yeah, look at that. My, my buddy, Ashley, I tattoo, um, she comes from New York to get tattooed. She's, and her and her mom come all the time. She's a sweetheart, but she says, come for the art, stay for the family like atmosphere. I mean, there's, we're very welcoming. You know, if you just want to come in and just take a look around and go get tattooed at another shop, it doesn't bother me. I mean, we're not in competition with people in our area. Um, we're just trying to create the type of environment that appreciates art, I guess, you know? So, um, if I people want to come in and just look around more than, more just, than welcome. Even if, like, even for somebody like to, who like never got a tattoo or, you know, it, it just speaks volume. Like you, I mean, you're saying you don't even have to, but it's just so like, damn, like I want to now. <laughs> like, it's like, he's told me to get tattooed somewhere else. How dare he? I'm going to get work done here. No. No, no, dude, we, I, I tell people to get tattooed by other people all the time. Like if somebody comes in and they want something that we can't do, like I just will send them to other people. We get tattooed by other people in, in our area. Yeah. Like, like I said, I just got tattooed by Dave Waugh. Um, Allison uh, from this last season of Ink Master, the buddy ones, Allison, uh, Sin and, well, and Allison. Well, yeah, she just tattooed me, and I just tattooed her. Uh, she was at my shop not that long ago. We were just tattooing each other for the day. Um, I, I think Brett Burnham, he works at Saints and Sinners in Baltimore City. Like, I'm getting tattooed by him next month. It, we, we tell people all the time, man, like, hey, this person's better at that. Or, dude, you know who would be dope at this? Because we're fans of people in our area as well. You know, like, there uh, other shops are in competition. You know, they're like, oh, no, don't go to that shop. They're dumb. Don't go to this shop. It's like the shops that... I don't respect the artwork. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about the shops where I do respect their artwork. And half the time I'm, I either want to get tattooed by them or people will come in and I can see it getting tattooed by them better. So we just send them out like, Hey man, go check out this guy at, you know, this shop or go check out that guy at this shop. You know, he's, he's going to nail it better than we could. Yeah. That's not like South Florida at all. <laughs> yeah. It's such a, yeah, it's, it's a competitive field. Like in Fort Lauderdale alone, bro, there's like over 20 shops. And for it's ridiculous how many shops are in Fort Lauderdale by itself. I wish it was. I wish it was that from like you know someone be straight up out about it like that. I mean, you're. I mean, the people who are in your area or tattooed or getting your shop. I mean, they're lucky because for people like not a lot of artists will think the same way that you do when it comes. To yeah, that. it's it's tough. It's and it, it's a tough way to think, and it takes time because um, it is a very cutthroat, I guess by nature kind of field, but. Um, I don't know. Like the, if you're getting tattooed somewhere else, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's so hard to explain, man. I feel like Cause it's not if you want me to do something specific for you, then you're going to know that that's, that I'm your artist for this. And I might not be your artist for everything. I might be your artist for like this specific piece, but, um, even the way we run our shop, like if you come in and you're like, Hey, I want Halo to do this. And I'm like, listen, man, I don't do this, but Merv does this, or Jackie's much better at this, or, you know, Larry's really good at this. He would do it better than me. We pass our clients on to each other all the time because the important thing isn't, you know, if you can make money, 
or if you can have, um, you know, like if you can have, it, the, the point is, is like, am I the best person to do the tattoo for you? Because the most important thing is the tattoo. It's not me or my ego or, or, or how much money I can make off of you or anything like that. Like it's honest to God more about, am I the best person for this? Can I do this as good as I possibly can? And if not, who can? And then, I don't know. You just be honest with people. I feel like honesty is no, a good <clears throat> promotion. Damn. Like, I wish I could just fly out right now and get tattooed. <laughs> I, I work off, like, I'm a big person when it comes to vibes. And I, like, like I was telling uh, Christian, if you can be the best artist in the world, but if I don't like your vibe or you come off a certain way, I don't want you to, you know, go tattoo my skin. So, like, for, yeah. you, for like, you being like this, I mean, it's very dumb. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's awesome to, just, to hear this because you would, I mean, even if, I mean, yeah, just like you'd be a new artist, I would love to get tattooed by, not just because of your work, but your passion and what you do. I mean, there's tattoo artists that I've seen that are awesome, but if they don't really like the tattoo, they're, you don't, you see it in the tattoo that really, they really didn't care, but you care so much even about to the little extent that for anybody that's even getting tattooed in your shop there, I would say they're very lucky because, yeah, I mean, it's an experience that I, I mean, I've dealt with from the best to the worst. So, I mean, it's yeah. all you're everything you're saying. And, you know, you don't want to get tattooed by somebody who you tell a, uh, an idea to and they're like, oh, I don't really know or I don't feel it or I don't really want to do that. You know, you, those are not the people that you want to get tattooed by. So, and, you know, you're not going to feel every tattoo. Like, you know, just because you're an artist, every tattoo that walks through the door, you're not going to be <laughs> feeling or you're not going to have, you know what I mean? Especially like day to day to day, you might not be feeling that tattoo so in the long run should you do the tattoo or shouldn't you do the tattoo you know what i mean like i don't know it's it, it, if if people just treated the tattoo to be the most important thing it's not the client either like a lot of people like the client's always right not in this damn field dude no way the clients to be honest wrong a lot of the times because they're usually not artists um you know, they're, they're fans of art. They have an idea, but they don't know how to put it down. And then that's where you have to come in and kind of show them, like, it should be this size. You know, this will fit the best on your body. Um, you, there's a lot of direction trying to, um, trying to take people, uh, trying to get people to get good tattoos. You know, like, it's a lot of direction. So, no, somebody it's just asked, is my mohawk on? Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, it's literally still here. It's just not up, dude. It probably looks different because it's not up. <laughs> no, it's still a mohawk. It's just long as fuck right now, man. I just, I don't know why I've been growing it out and it's gray now. So. Eh, it's, 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 it's cool. You can't even see it. But one thing somebody said, which I was actually, well, not curious about, but I think is a cool to uh, topic because I'm loving what everybody's saying. I mean, I had, I had other questions I was going to ask, but people are just asking me and are very, that's why I love Instagram Live. People are interacting so much. And it's making me just want to switch to because their their thing is better or it relates more. So I love this yeah. Instagram vibe. So someone asks like about a thigh tattoo being painful. I have a thigh ta tattoo, and it wasn't that bad. But I mean, I was gonna ask you, what is your most painful tattoo that you? All think of them. <laughs> really? I swear, dude. I I fucking hate getting tattooed. Like, I've never liked it, and I. I don't have a – well, I can't say that. My back is probably the worst tattoo I've got. Um, my back hurt like a bitch. Oh, my God. My back is awful. Like, my the back is absolutely awful. What's that? The artwork is awful or hurt like awful? Oh, no, no, no. No, the artwork is amazing. I've got um, Teresa Sharp and Aaron Chance. They're doing a collaboration on my back. They're both incredible artists. They did a, they're doing an amazing job so far. It is her um, my mother. <laughs> Dude, it's it's a 10 out of 10 from the beginning to the end. I don't know what it is about my back. Um, there's not a spot on my back that isn't just um, just okay. rough, man. <laughs> How did this feel then? The uh... Whoa, look at this. <laughs> it just came oh, out of nowhere. Yeah, my my dog, she's trying to sneak into the, into the thing too. She's just staring at me from the other side of the couch. <laughs> it just scared me so much because like, He's still got his little claws that he just randomly jumped on me like, hey, what's up? What's up, Dad? I want to be part of this. <laughs> oh, Was that man. Persian? Or? Um, he's a uh, Sphinx. Sphinx hey. cat. <laughs> yeah, I have two of them. I have um, this one's Cloud and then the other one's Sephiroth. Um, Sephiroth. Is that, that's a Final Fantasy, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny, too, because the, that's the way I wanted him. Is so Cloud, this little guy, he's blonde with blue eyes, the oh, that's super cool. blue eyes. That's dope. And then um, Sephiroth is black with green eyes, just like in the video game. So I was real picky about the ones I wanted. That's, that's sick. We have my dog. She keeps creeping up. I'm trying to see what people are saying because I want to interact more. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Uh, da, 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 da. I mean, you're getting, bro. If you like were to print this out, it's like a perfect resume from everybody just like praising you, which is so awesome. <laughs> That's crazy. Like it's so awesome to see like everybody just praise, praising you. Oh, someone oh. said, someone said on a on a scale from one to ten, what is your pain tolerance in general? Um, my ability to sit is there. Like, um, my back piece is eight hours. Um. You know, like I sit for eight hours because it's all the way out in Richmond, Virginia. It's like two and a half hour drive. They charge by the day. Um, so I usually want to get eight hour sessions with them. Um, my throat, I sat for six and a half hours on my throat. Holy shit. Um, yeah. And then each sitting on my arm is eight hours. So I can sit. Um, I just don't like it. You know, like <laughs> I'm not, I'm not one of those people that's like, um, oh, tattoos feel great. I, I love this. This is awesome. Um, no, tattoos suck. You have to earn them. Part of earning them is sitting through yeah. it. Um, I just, uh, I just don't, I don't enjoy And you know, I don't know if people are being honest when they say that they enjoy it. Yeah, I, I don't. When people say, like, when people are like, oh, I love you in tattoo. Who the fuck? Are, like, when people ask me, no. I look around and like, oh, it's like puppies licking me. Because it's like, obviously not. <laughs> But when people are like, oh, I love the feeling, like, are you, are you getting touched with the same needle that I get touched with? Like, it's awful. Yeah. You, you know, doing? and that's, that's the part is like, it's a rite of passage. When you're getting tattooed, you're, you're earning it. If you enjoy it, it's, you're not really earning it. It's, it's painful for a reason, you know, like you have to, you got to sit through it, you know? And that's, um, I think that's, that's part of the tattoo process is earning it. Um, and then once I got to a point where I was like, you know, no matter where I'm getting these things done, they all hurt. Um, <laughs> that's when I started saying, screw it. And I'm going to get my throat, my face, my head, because my arms are just as bad as, um, my arms are just as bad as my throat. Like everyone's like, oh, the upper arm isn't that bad. Dude, my head, my throat, like my chest hurt just as bad as my upper arm. They all hurt exactly the same. This right here that I got. <laughs> He was heavy-handed to really, like, get that, like, get the black in and the saturation. I bruised literally in the inside of my arm. I wasn't even tattooed there, and I was bruised in the inside of my arm. <laughs> so, like, yeah, they're brutal, man. So when people are like, oh, oh, what spot is more? I mean, I mean, some spots aren't as bad as others, but I think every, like, I just, I was in uh, New York for my, my birthday, and I was getting tattooed at uh, No Idols, uh, Matt Buckshop. And I got a, mm -hmm. I got a, a cool from from Matt Triano. I got a cool. Uh, it's a it's a Daruma doll, but he's a neo traditional artist. Matt Triano. He he looks kind of like you, like real like tall, lanky guy with glasses. Yes. Yeah, that dude's the bomb, man. He's awesome. He tattooed my, uh, he tattooed a Daruma doll in in his own style because I love mashup of styles. Like I don't know why, uh -huh. I, I I really like mashup of styles. He killed it, and, like, I didn't realize how close to the back of my kneecap it was, like, in that ditch area. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I pick, like, I don't know why I pick spots that are, like, painful, like, because it's cool, like, the position, like, just the positioning I put it in, I'm like, uh, let me just eat this pain, like, because pain's only temporary. Exactly, exactly. One bad thing. Yeah, it's, it's rough. <laughs> Getting like, tattooed sucks. Uh, well, like, a bad story. I got my knee. I was in Rome with my wife uh, a few years ago, and I got my kneecaps tatted. That day, after that it tatted, she wanted to go to the Coliseum. So I walked for like five hours right after I got my kneecaps tatted. It was like the dumbest idea I I, I could have done on a vacation. Like, <laughs> yeah. So these. Let me see. I feel like I, if you haven't got a tattoo in a while, you forget. Some of what I feel like if you haven't got a tattoo in a while. We got how much it hurts and it's worse way more than if you're constantly getting i would say no because if you mentally going in like you, like what i do i'll like i'll mentally go in and i'll be like yo this is gonna hurt when you already put that pain level higher than what it is and you get tired and you're like oh this hurts but it's not as bad as what i thought like i that's how i cope 
at least when I get tattooed, I automatically think it's going to be hell. So when it's not, I'm like, oh, damn, this isn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's it's definitely better to mentally prepare for the worst so that you're you're kind of pumped up and, and ready. I think when you go into it being like, oh, this isn't going to be nothing, um, it's rough. That, that's a, that girl, Shelby, the one who just said something, Echo in the Moon. Yeah. Um, she's getting a huge back piece from one of the guys, um, uh, Merv, that works for me, and it's beautiful. Her whole back is literally gorgeous. Um, you heard that? And she's got a gorgeous back. <laughs> yeah, no, her back is very, very pretty. Um, what is it? And it, it fits her body really well. It's like a – it's a – you know, it's one of the Greek goddesses or um, maybe not a goddess, but I don't, I don't remember exactly who it is, but – Merv draws perfect women. Like, he draws amazing women. And, um, yeah, hi, it's literally the most painful thing. <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> Shelby's a good friend, man. She, um, it, she, I know, and I know she cried, like, on one of her sessions. Um, Helen of Troy, there it is. Got yeah, it. she cried on one of her sessions because it was so painful. But as she started coming back in a little bit more frequently, it, it just got easier for her. Um, but I think it was like the shock of going into it the first time, oh, getting yeah. colored in, which is so much, man. Yeah. I remember when I got my first tattoo, I thought, like, I mentally thought, like, I think a lot of tattooing, it's a lot of a mind game. Because, like you said, you sit for six hours. You know it hurts like a bitch, but you mentally get yourself to sit for that long. Where if other yeah. people really thought about it more, they would, like, get up from six hours of sitting. Because, like, tattoo time is one of the slowest times. Like, I feel like time slows down when you're getting tattooed. Yeah, you know, and it depends on your environment, too, because I think that, like, our shop um, has a bunch of different, like, a bunch of different, we have an open floor plan, so there's a lot of people in the vicinity of where you are, like, so clients end up talking to each other, the artists end up talking to each other's clients. A lot uh, of it's like a huge... Yeah, it's a lot of disruption. We have um, projectors and TVs going on. We have music playing. There's always something kind of happening and going on constantly. So it's really hard to not be distracted while you're there, you know. And I always bring shit with me. Did I bring either a book or, um, like, my iPad or, you know, a friend even? A friend is the best thing to bring. You need someone to help talk to you. Because um, not all artists this. talk while they're tattooing. Like, I remember this. I watched... I forgot, what, I forgot what anime I watched, but like I was watching an anime the whole time when I was getting this on my arm. So I was sitting for like six, I, I was there for the whole day just to like knock it out. Yeah. And it sucks yeah. because of like, see, like I have a twitch. So like, it's hard for me because when I'm like sitting down, like, I mean, I don't twitch as bad with like getting tattooed, but it sucks because I sometimes have to focus to not twitch when I'm getting tattooed, but I'm, I'm usually go with it, but it sucks. It's, it's funny, though, like, I have to give a disclosure to any artist, like, hey, I do have Tourette's to... <laughs> <laughs> just fucking... Because, like, I'm Yeah, like, just say something fucked up, just like, shit, you know, just freak out all of a sudden. <laughs> me, it's not vocal. Me, it's just, like, my body... Like, my body just wants to do its own thing when it wants to. Yeah. But, but it's funny, though, because I'm getting... If I don't do it, they're thinking that I'm probably in pain, but it's like, nah. My body is just... It's, it's on its own ride. <laughs> Anything that you want to share or say anything that's just a whatever, like your last two cents? Um, there was somebody that ended up um, giving a comment and they said like they, they just started being an artist and it was like their first, um, I guess their first year. Do I have any advice for first year tattooers? Um, and I'll tell you one thing I can say, man, is draw, just draw, 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 draw and learn because <clears throat> tattooing dude uh, tattooing doesn't teach you anything about art it really doesn't like <clears throat> um it it doesn't like you learn so much about <clears throat> tattooing by doing art you know like outside of it so the more i've been oil painting or airbrushing or colored pencil or markers i mean those things have really 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 taught me a lot about my um my craft I feel like what happens is people get into tattooing and then they expect the tattooing to make them better artists. And it's just not true, man. It's the time that you spend outside of the chair practicing that makes you a better artist. I think Ink Master proves that because the artist is that we're great technicians, great executioners. But when they told them, hey, do something creative, it was all like, fuck. 
Well, you know, you don't have to be creative to be a tattooer, and that's the no, that's that, the funniest like, part. When you said the drawing well, becoming more well rounded, like when it came down to the time where it's like, all right, you know, like draw something. It was like if they couldn't mimic like tattooing, you can easily make the stencil, do that. When it came to like you know do, actually doing something, that's where you saw artists on the show where it was like, damn. I mean, they're good tattooers, but the art part was not there. Yeah, I mean, because you can you can pretty much be successful and never do anything artistic. And I I think that it's one of the biggest problems with with I guess the perception of artists is that if you are a tattoo artist, then you must be an artist, and if you're an artist, you must be able to draw everything. And it's so weird because um, they they don't always coincide with each other, man. Like yeah. um, there are there are plenty of tattooers that cannot draw very well at all um and that's not to say that they're bad tattooers they're probably fantastic tattooers um but there's a lot of them who can't draw and then there's people who spend a lot of their time drawing and then their drawings just translate really well into their into their tattooing and it's noticeable like when i started painting and uh really started taking art classes there's a noticeable jump no um, i can tell, I started... I can, I can tell techniques <laughs> Because like with painting, you layer stuff, you you mix tones a lot better. And like when I look at your portraits, it does look like you you treat it like it's a painting, at least from yeah. what, what I I see it as. So like that definitely yeah. goes. But guys, I don't want to kill any more Halo's time because he has his cat. He's got a plan to um, take over the world with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like petting it like a little creep, like. <laughs> So, he will not let me not pet him. He just won't. I'm surprised he went this long, but he will not let me not pet him. Because he's on camera. He's just in my shit. So I was going to say, uh, so just anything with the website where you shop at, because um, uh, I'm throwing this everywhere. So what is, just, just, just advertise yourself like crazy in this last minute. Okay, so um, my website is www.tattoosbyhalo.com. Um, the shop website is uh, w www.blacklotustattoos.com. That's where all the artists, the amazing artists I get to work with are. Um, info, I know somebody just asked twice. Info on the, um, uh, oh, what's up, Bowman? Bowman. Uh, yeah, he's fantastic, dude. Um, info on uh, the, um, the shop uh, that does our wraps is uh, Baltimore Graphics. Um, Usually I'll end up doing the design work. I send it to them, and then they um, they end up doing the uh, the artwork for me. And then Tattoos by Halo is my everything, man. It's my um, – oh, I love you too, Bull, man. And your artwork, dude. You're rad as fuck. Um, big, big fan, by the way. Um, the uh, – what is it called? Like, my – Tattoos by Halo is my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook, my um, – my pretty much my everything man like my video game like gamer tag i mean it's everything <laughs>